right, thanks for watching. And today let me prove the divergence test, which says the following, if a series converges, so if sum of a n converges, then the sequence itself has to go to zero. Then a n has to go to zero, or equivalently, if a n doesn't converge to zero, then the series must diverge. Which makes sense. Suppose, for instance, the sequence converges to two. What this means is eventually we're just adding up terms that are close to two. And so the sequence series becomes two plus two plus two plus two plus two, which just diverges in this case. It blows up to infinity. So for instance, does this series converge 3 minus 2 over n? Well, the sequence itself goes to 3, which is not 0, so it diverges. So it diverges because 3 minus 2 over n goes to 3, which is not 0. Or, for instance, the series minus 1 over n so minus 1 plus 1, minus 1 plus 1, etc., etc., it diverges because the limit as n goes to infinity of minus 1 to the n doesn't exist. So if a series converges, the sequence itself goes to 0, but be very careful if the sequence goes to 0, this does not imply that the series converges. And here's a very classical example. For instance, 1 over n goes to 0, but the sum of 1 over n, so the harmonic series, is actually infinity, which diverges. So this is kind of a necessary condition, but not a sufficient condition. All right, and now we would like to prove this fact and for this, we have to remind you what it means for a sequence in general to be Cauchy. Because I know it's been a long time, so let me remind you this uh, definition. So Sn, again, just a random sequence, nothing to do with series, so is Cauchy. If eventually the terms of the sequence get closer and closer to each other. So if, no matter which error I give you, so for epsilon, there is a threshold, capital N, such that if M and N, I guess you'll see why, M and M are bigger than that threshold, then S let's see, Sn minus Sm is less than epsilon. So again, even though initially the values of the sequence might not be closer, close to each other, eventually, after some threshold, they actually become pretty close. So they're in some region of size epsilon. Where here, for instance, we have Sn, and here we have Sn. And remember, because R is complete, Cauchy is the same thing as convergence. So, um, therefore, we can also use this as an alternative definition of convergence. All right. And now, what we would like to do, we would like to tweak this a little bit to work for series. So let me just give you a couple of remarks, which hopefully are not too shocking. First of all, m and n are arbitrary integers. And not only that, if you sn minus sm is the same thing as sm minus sn in absolute value, meaning we can just interchange the two. And therefore, it's okay to assume that one is bigger than the other. So without loss of generality, assume n is bigger than m. So without loss of generality, uh, n is bigger than m, which is okay. 
because we can just say one integer is bigger than the other and it doesn't affect uh, our result. Therefore, we can just replace this by n is bigger than m and that's bigger than capital M. That's first of all. Second of all, well, this is true for all m, so let's just relabel everything with m minus 1. Because again, m is arbitrary, so m minus 1 is arbitrary as well. And again, uh, with our loss of generality, replace m with m minus 1. So what this becomes is n bigger than m minus 1, and again after your threshold, and this becomes sn minus sm minus 1 less than epsilon. Again, it still reflects the idea that if after this threshold, all the values of your sequence are less than epsilon. So it's not altered by this assumption. Last but not least, Suppose I tell you n is bigger than 8. That's the same thing as saying, again, we're in integers here, it's the same thing as saying n is greater or equal to 9. So, for instance, suppose you take an exam and I told you you get strictly more than 72. Your score is strictly higher than 72, then you can say, oh, my score must be at least 73, assuming only integer scores here. So, and but however, that's the same thing with m minus 1. So in particular, if I tell you n is bigger than m minus 1, this is the same thing as saying n is greater or equal to m. So this last thing, we can just replace by n is greater or equal to m, and it's after your threshold. All right, I know lots of engineering, lots of tweaking here going on. However, the nice thing is with this, we have a nicer definition of convergence, which again, I'll erase this in order to rewrite this. So here's our new definition of convergence. So definition, if you want Sn converges, or Sn is Cauchy, uh, if, again, no matter how small of an error I give you, so for epsilon positive, there is capital N such that if N is greater than or equal to m and is after your threshold, then sn minus sm minus 1 is less than epsilon. Again, which still reflects the same idea that no matter how small of an error I give you, after the threshold, all the values of your sequence are eventually close to each other. Now you might say, why, Payam? Why did you take this wonderful, easy definition and made it so complicated? Because it works so well for a series. So in particular, let me apply this with our partial sums. So application. Suppose now. Because before we assumed this was true for all sequences, but now let's assume we actually have a partial sum. So suppose, so if S or Sn, it's the sum from k from 1 to n of ak, which is just a1 plus a2 up to am, then it turns out this simplifies tremendously. Then, well, let's see. Sn minus Sn minus 1, well, that becomes the sum. Now, remember n is bigger than m, and that's bigger than 1, let's say. Okay. Then, this Sn, it's the sum from 1 all the way up to n. So that becomes a1 plus a2 plus, let's say, up to n minus 1 plus a m plus dot 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 plus a m. And you're subtracting the sum from 1 up to n minus 1. 
So minus A1, minus A2, minus dot, 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 minus AM minus one. So this is SN, this is SM. And now look at the beautiful thing. All the, the head of the series disappears and you're just left with the tail. So this just becomes AM plus dot, 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 plus AN, which is really the sum from K, from M to N of AK. So this difference actually becomes quite simplified. It just becomes what's called the tail of the series. So kind of the sum, but after a large, uh, for large M and N, if you want. So it, not the beginning terms, but almost like the end terms, if you'd like. And therefore, using this simplification, we finally have our better criterion uh, to show or a better definition for a series to converge. So now, last but not least, we have what's called the Cauchy tri criterion. So Cauchy criterion. Namely, a series, uh, sum of an converges. If and only if, for all epsilon, there is a threshold, so there is capital N, such that if N is greater or equal to M is after that threshold, then the tail of the series is as small as we want. Then the sum from M to N of AK is less than epsilon. Again, what does that mean? What does it mean for a series to converge? Suppose you add up A1 plus A2 plus dot, dot, dot. Well, it means that no matter how small our error, if we take the threshold to be large enough, then any sum you take after the threshold, so AM plus dot, 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 plus AN will be less than your error, will be small. In other words, any sum after capital N will be very, very small. So here's, for example, an intuitive example. Intuitively, for instance, the two series converges of one over n squared converges because essentially for large values of n, any sum will be super small. For instance, suppose you want to make that sum less than 0 0.03, then for instance, take those terms after let's say 100 or 1000 or something. Because for instance, one over 100 squared plus one over 101 squared 101 Dalmatians, 1 over 102 squared. Well, this is actually roughly uh, 0 0.00029, which is less than 0 0.0003. Okay. However, this is just for three terms. What, this, what convergence means is that for a huge number, any number of terms actually becomes less than 0 0.0003. Okay? And this is, turns out it's not true for one over n. You can never make this super small uh, if, even if you take a huge value of n. Okay, and now with that Cauchy criterion, we can finally prove the divergence test. So proof of divergence test And you'll see it's just an application of this with a special value of n. So divergence test, remember, that says a n converges if and only, that implies a n goes to zero. Well, again, you just rewrite this definition, you'll see. Um, so let epsilon be given. Then, 
since the series converges, we know there's a threshold, capital N, such that any sum after capital N is super small, such that if uh, N is greater or equal to M is greater than capital N, then the sum uh, from M to N of AK is less than epsilon. Now, here's the thing. This is true for every N and M. So, in particular, it should be true if N equals to M. You see, there's a huge number of values for which this is true. So, in particular, it is true for the special case where N equals M. So then, uh, for the same capital N, if uh, N equals M, and that's capital N, greater than capital N, then this sum from k, from m to m of a k, well, what does that become? The sum from one term to the same term of a k, that's nothing else than a m, which if you want is the same thing as a m minus zero, and that's less than epsilon. So, just deciphering this, what have we shown? If epsilon is given, there's a threshold capital N such that for all M after that threshold, AM minus zero is less than epsilon, but that's the same thing as just showing that AM converges to zero. AM converges to zero as M goes to infinity. Literally the definition of AM converging to zero, and therefore we're done. How cool is that? All right, thank you very much.